Okay, so we'll start with a really simple one about the definition of lossy and lossless compression. The main thing to know about lossy versus lossless is that there's a trade-off. On the one hand, lossy will permanently remove data that you cannot get back. However, the gain you get from that is you generally get better compression, get smaller results. In contrast, lossless compression, you guarantee you can get back the original data, but the trade-off is you generally don't get as good of compression. So let's look at the answers here. So this question is very simple, and it's basically stating that they're trying to use some kind of compression. That's the only real part of this that matters at the top. Now the options here provide several things. This one says lossless compression will usually save more space, and this is false. Lossless will not save more space. Lossy will generally save more space. Lossless compression of an image will result in a file that is equal, this is false because the whole purpose of lossless or lossy compression is you'll get a smaller file. However, you can eventually get back the original. That's what lossless is about. But this is just saying that the image itself will be, will be the same size. It's not correct. The last one says, sound clips compressed with lossy compression for storage on the platform can be restored to their original quality. This is also not true. This is not the quality of lossy. This is what describes lossless compression. So this one's also not true. The one that's correct is lossy compression of an image file generally, generally provides a greater reduction in transmission time. This means that in general, lossy compression does better compression than lossless compression. This question as a whole basically is the overview of lossy versus lossless. It's mostly all you have to know about those two is what's in this question. For the next example, we are going to do a compression algorithm. And this compression algorithm is going to use what's called a dictionary or a mapping in order to replace characters on some text with different characters. If you did the code.org curriculum, you should be familiar with this. This was used as the example for compression for lossless. If you didn't do the code.org curriculum, you may not have done this, but that's okay because we're gonna go over it. The basis of this algorithm is that it's going to save a list right here. It's described here, save a list. And this list is going to contain a mapping of characters. And the character pairs, are going to basically map to some corresponding characters. So that sounds kind of nebulous, but let's actually look at an example. It should help clear it out. This example right here, we have, this is the best wish, and we're going to replace it with this thing right here. Now basically what they did was they took some characters and they replaced them with other characters, right? So let's look at this. Here we have this thing right here, and we use this to replace the characters TH. So any TH is replaced with this percent sign, and this character right here, the pound sign, is going to be used to replace IS, right? So whenever we see TH, we're going to replace it with this thing. Whenever we see IS, we're gonna replace it with this thing right here. If you look in the example here, that's basically what they did here. And they shortened the string. Notice that this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 characters, right? This one right here actually has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 characters. Now here's where you have to make actually a pretty important distinction because this is kind of subtle, but the string is very much shorter. 16 is obviously shorter than 21. However, you have to notice that in terms of compression, this would actually not be good compression because we have to send along this thing which is called a dictionary it's this mapping notice that this has six characters one two three four five six so even though we saved five characters by doing this we ended up having to send six characters over so we actually lost compression here the resulting text is actually bigger right the resulting text here has 22 characters instead of 21 that said that's not what this question is asking us about you always have to be cautious about that this question is actually asking us about shortening the string's length. The string's length is just how many characters are in the original string. So let's take a look at this. Now we have several options here, right? We wanna see which one of these cannot use this to make a shorter string. Banana, obviously we can shorten it by using something like this. If we use percent sign and we make it so that AN is percent sign, we can turn this into B percent sign percent sign A, right? So this will be B, A, N, A, N, A, banana. You can do the same with meet me later. If you do maybe, let's do a pound sign, represents M, E, 
and then you can do e, and then here's another pound sign for the me, and then you can just do later. So here, this string is obviously shorter. So it's actually pretty clear what we're looking for. We just need for at least one character pair to repeat itself. So we have just two characters that can repeat themselves, like me or an. We can shorten the, the string. So here, let's find one. Here we go, re and re, that's a pair. We can do the same kind of mapping, and we'll get a shorter string. The only one that doesn't have something like this is level up. Level up does not have any two characters that repeat themselves, which means that the answer for this one is B. This is the only one we can't shorten. Always be sure to read the care question carefully. Uh, sometimes the question will be asking for something very specific, like what the shorter string length is. It's not really talking about compression as a whole here. But let's end with a fairly tricky problem here. This problem is basically asking us which one of these different options represents a lossless transformation. And you might be wondering, what do they mean by transformation? Well, when you're compressing something, or sometimes it doesn't even have to be compression. In this case, this question is asking about just changing an image. If you want to change something in a way that's lossless, it means that you can undo that. You can get back the original. If it's lossy, then after the transformation, there's no way of knowing what the original was, unless you kept track of it somewhere. In this case, we have an image that uses RGB. Now, it doesn't really state it in the problem other than saying that each individual pixel uses red, green, and blue values. But from looking at the third option, you can see that they're assuming that these pixels, each red, green, and blue value, go somewhere from 0 to 255. What this means is that you can represent a color by anywhere from 0 to the value of 255 with red, green, and blue. Right, So maybe you have 0 blue, 255 red, 0 green. That's a pure red color. Here is going to describe several transformations, and it's going to ask you which one of these is lossless. The first one is obviously not correct. It says compressing the image in a way that may lose information but will only suffer a small loss of image quality. If you are losing information, then unfortunately this is not lossless. This is lossy. So A is wrong automatically. Now, by the way, this is a question where it can be very useful to actually knock out answers that cannot be true, because as you'll see, the transformation that's correct is actually kind of tricky. Let's look at B. In B it says, you're creating a grayscale by averaging out colors. So this is kind of tricky, because it might seem like you might be able to reverse this, but it's not really. Let's look at one case of this. Let's look at a pixel for where maybe you have 0 red, 100 green, and 200 blue. Now this pixel will average out so that all of these are 100. Now if you were to start from this, from a pixel where everything is 100, there's no way of knowing which one of the original R, G, or B were the 100, or basically there's no way of going from this back to the original, right? And it might not even have been 100. You might be averaging out some different values that lead to some average. For example, if your numbers would have been 0, 100, and let's say perhaps uh, 150, the average of this is actually going to be something like 83.3, say 83. This isn't even one of the original values. And from this, there's actually no way of going back to the original. So what you have to think about when you get a thing like this is, can I actually go from this new value back to the original? And if the answer is no, then you don't have lossless, you have lossy. So from this, we can actually see that there's no way to make this lossless, so it's not B. All right, now let's jump to D. D says, modifying part of the image by taking pixels in one part of the picture and copying them to the pixels in another part of the picture. This would basically be like, let's say you had a picture like this, right? Let's say it just had nine pixels, just for simplicity, right? And now let's give these some colors. Now let's say you had a picture that looked like this and you just wanted to copy one of these onto another. Like maybe we make this one into green. Now this is your new picture. There's actually no way for us to know what that original pixel was. We know this is green, but there's no way that we know that this used to be blue. So there's no way to go back from this to the original where this was blue. So this right here cannot be lossless. So by elimination, we know it's C, but let's figure out why it's actually C. Now with this proposal here, what it's doing is it's taking each of the original values, so let's go with 100, or sorry, let's go with 0, 100, and let's say 200. So what they're proposing that we do is we're going to take 255 and subtract each of the values out of 255, so 255 minus our value. So for example, the transformation would be as such. This pixel would become 255 minus 0, which is just 255. This pixel right here would be 255 minus 100, which is 155. And this one right here will be 255 
minus 200, which is just 55. What this transformation actually does is it makes all of these much brighter. So if this was pretty dark, this is going to be brighter. And in contrast, if you had something like 255, 255, 255, which is solid white, very bright pixel, it would do the reverse. It would make it darker. So basically this makes lighter colors dark and darker colors light. Now the question here is, is this lossless? So how can we do to turn this back into the original? It turns out that you can just kind of by, this is a, an example where problem solving is useful, just thinking about it, but you can actually get back the original by doing the same transformation. So you're basically just flipping. If you do 255 minus these values, you get back your originals. Let's take a look. Do 255 minus 255, you get back zero. If you do 255 minus 155, you get back 100. If you do 255 minus 55, you just get 200. So you can see here how by just doing the same transformation, you're basically flipping back and forth, which makes it so you can get back the original and it makes this transformation completely lossless. Thanks for watching. I'm Flavio and I'll be back with more soon.